and the contracting parties passing between them mm-hmm. in making a covenant. Then it references Genesis 15 chapter. It says that, can you read that last part about something between them? Yes, it says, with reference to the cutting or dividing of animals into two parts mm-hmm. and the contracting parties passing between them right. and making a covenant. Passing right through that division right there, right? Dang. Okay? Yeah. That's why I went down and <coughs> don't it say go to Genesis 15. Mm-hmm. That's the spirit. <laughs> so whoever got the Genesis, we're going to read the whole chapter. All right. And listen to the very vivid detail on what the Heavenly Father is telling Abraham to do. Okay? Come all right, this is Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a, uh, Abram in a vision. Because you remember, when you go into this, Abram had done a lot. He had done a whole lot before this. When you read Genesis 12, that's when he speaks to Abram, all right, when he was with his father and he divided himself from his family It went over to the land of Canaan. Mm-hmm. And that's when the promise of the covenant was made mention to him about it. Okay, now Abraham was told that he was going to have children and see and they were going to flourish. All right, and Abraham was already 75 years old when you read it in Genesis chapter 12. So he was already up there in age. So you can imagine being up there in age and you was promised this one particular thing. You're doing all these mighty works. You met Melchizedek. You offered your tenth, the tenth of everything that spoils to him. You know what I'm saying? So in Abraham's mind, it's a lot of preparation on what's next. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. All right. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Right, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. He's telling this to Abram in a vision. Go ahead. And Abram said, Yahweh, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go child? And this clearly shows that he knew the name. Come. Because Abraham had had understanding. Says right here. Exactly, exactly. Come. So I can read that again. Come. Verse 2, and Abram said, Yahweh, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's the reason why he expounded on childless, because let's rewind back. We were talking about Adam before, and that breath was given unto Adam. Well, what came with that breath again was that knowledge and that understanding. And what we teach is that before the laws was written on stone or anything, it was an oral tradition that was passed down through child to child. Adam was passed down to Seth. The Seth's children, it was passed all the way down to Enoch, to Methuselah, Lamech, Noah. And that's one of the reasons why Abel's sacrifice was recognized in Cain's work. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You already knew the tradition. The tradition. Straight up and cut. Straight up. Exactly. When, so when Abraham goes into how I go childless, he knew that this understanding that he had, it was even promised to him in Genesis 12. It had to go to somebody under him, one of his children. Because again, we're talking about the covenant. All right? The promise, the understanding, the knowledge, wisdom, the understanding of the Lord, his spirit. All right? So go ahead, proceed. Because he's talking about, I go childless. Like, what's up? Go ahead. All right? It says, What will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Because you remember, Abraham was already up there in age, and he almost gave his inheritance. To Eliezer, mm-hmm. who wasn't of his line or a seed. Right, right. Which shows you right there that Abraham kind of fluxed a little bit in faith. Because in Genesis 12, it was already told that he was going to have a seed that was going to flourish. The sands of the sea, star in heaven. You know what I'm saying? But he still, he, of course, he maintained his Abraham. You know what I'm saying? But he says, see, I'm a child. This, so should I give this? It, it, I know, right? I, 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 I kind of want to say yeah, that. He's, he's still Abraham at this point, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're right. <clears throat> you ready for verse 4? Oh, okay, sure. All right. I mean, verse 3. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my heir. Mm-hmm. So your seed, again, is supposed to receive your blessing. All right. Of course, substance. But on top of that, you remember, a promise was given to Abraham. You know, so he's looking for that part, too, to be given. All right. You got it. All right. And behold... The word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy heir. Somebody pull up Psalm 138. I told you. Mm-hmm. Look, I told you. Yep. You see what? But, but as I'm saying, he had a friendship with the Most High to where he and he's at. Exactly. Exactly. Come. 
Real quick, uh, Psalms one uh, Psalms one thirty eight. You start from the top. We're gonna read the first two verses. Okay. All right. All right. Good time. Okay. Go back. Okay. Uh, Psalm one thirty eight. Test the story. One. He says, "I will praise thee with my with with my whole heart." This is David. Okay. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Go ahead. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Right. For thou hast magnified thy word above the, all thy name. Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So soak it in. Think about it. He already spoke this to Abraham. He already spoken all these things. It has to come to pass. Like the promise given to us. People can talk anything that they want to about the Israelites. The Lord not only dealing with the Israelites no more. But when you go according to the promise that went back to Abraham... It has to be fulfilled still. This is a friendship he made with Abraham. And our forefathers before that even were aware of it. Remember, Enoch prophesied about the other side. So they had understanding of this seed that was going to be a nation of people who the Messiah was going to come through and pretty much um, redeem this seed right here. Even Adam had to have that knowledge of it, man. It's the other side. He was given the breath. So he had to have the understanding. You know, you got a precept. Yep. Galatians chapter three, I'm sorry, verse fifteen says, "Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto." And so you can't do nothing about it. These Christians, they oh no, the Lord's dealing with everybody now. It changed. No, it never changed. It's never going to. He had written it and he told it already. He already established it. It was already established. It wasn't ever going to change the Lord. In Psalms 138 and 2, he said he magnifies his word over his own name. Now, people look at that misunderstood and think that since your house has his word, he's putting your house out over himself when that's not the case. I was, when we was in Mississippi, we was out there with those brothers. Priest body and brought up a beautiful statement, something I'd love to share. But he stayed pretty much. We understand the order with us being in the know. You have your Yahweh, your Yahweh Man, woman, children. Nothing's over Yahweh. So the only thing that's over him that he can put over him is the words that he speaks. Because he's at that level. So anything that he says, he has to abide by it. If he make a promise, somebody pull up Numbers 20, 23, 19. Mm-hmm. If he pulls a promise up, it has to be fulfilled. And he has to, he has to do it because he said it. Yes. Now, I'm sorry. it's all good. In the process of him executing it, he might... Round and switch a few things up, but the intentional purpose of the end all be all has to be fulfilled. You know, you get a point? Yeah, I was going to say, well, I mean, the scripture says that the word that he speaks doesn't come back to order. Mm-hmm. That's right, brother. That's right. Anybody got that numbers? No. Numbers? Numbers. 19. Numbers. 23 19 or 19 23? 23. I, 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 okay. It says, uh, the most high is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, uh, hath he said, and shall not he do it? Exactly. So I say, yeah. So he's not going to, like, literally, bro, the elect are going to be saved from Babylon. If we those men, we're going to get the heck out of here, man, because of the promise that the Lord had made with our fathers, man. That's right. All right. You remember, I know you, got, I know you, you remember Egypt in the book of Exodus. When you read it, matter of fact, I'm going to pull this out real quick. I know you got something to that. Oh, so I'm sorry, brother. This is going to add on to this point. And then you can pull yours out after where I got to bring them up. Can you call and read it? Galatians chapter 3, I'm going to read verse 15 again. I'm going to read down. It says, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed or ratified, right, no man disannulled it or added thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. There we go. Abraham and his seed. And as we go according to the covenant, you got the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the Holy Spirit, the word. Mm-hmm. That's something that had to be passed down to this particular seed. A lot of people will be like, well, y'all focus on flesh, y'all focus on flesh. No, we focus on the spirit. But the thing about it is his spirit was only going to be given to a particular family on the planet Earth. Right. And that's just it. Because it was already written. That's right. You know? You had a little more of that? Yes, a little more verse. Okay. It says, Not to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saved not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, 
and to thy seed, which is Yahweh Shai, all right? And the reason why I want to bring that mm-hmm. verse out is because back in Genesis 12 chapter, it talks about how Abraham uh, pretty much uh, men will be blessed if they bless thee, and men will be cursed if they curse thee, right. and, that the, and that through this seed would the nations of the earth be blessed. Right. That's why Yahweh Shai is so important, because through Yahweh Shai himself, right. come through the loins of Abraham, and then coming through the loins of David, fulfilling the prophecies, mm-hmm. through him we had a we had a we had an avenue back exactly. to the heavenly father. That's that seed that was talking about. That's that right. That was right. Spoken about exactly. back in and that's exactly. why his name was changed too, if I could say from Abram to Abraham. Mm-hmm. That Abraham means father of the multitude. That's right. You know, mm-hmm. from that that one seed, you know, yep. that would be the establishment of the nation of Israel and the promise. Come. Doesn't Abram mean exalted father? Yeah, yeah. Exalted Abram means exalted father. Abraham. 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 So mm-hmm. that just shows the power of the Most High in, in, in keeping an oath. Because if you make a vow, or which a vow is an oath, mm-hmm. or swear, you gotta keep. You got to. <laughs> yeah, he, is, he expects us to do it. Yo, yeah. So why would he not hold himself to that same mm-hmm. degree? Right. The, word is, the word is fine. Exactly. Went from the highest level. Oh, yeah. so we, you pick the perfect chapter to make that point. God. <laughs> God. Bro, when, when I read this chapter again, yeah. when I was putting this lesson together, I was like, Damn, yeah. man, bro. Well, when you read here in Genesis, which is good, you know, we'll, we'll go through it and then it's highlighted in the seventeenth chapter. Because yeah. what what confirms that covenant at that time? Mm-hmm. The surface is right. Which is what coming of the flesh, coming of the Straight up. Ooh. <laughs> See, I didn't mention that part. Hey. That's why this is a lesson today. That's why it's a lesson today. Good, good, good. That's just Yeah. Yeah, that was, you know, the purpose behind the circumcision is that cutting. That was a covenant, you know. But, you know, let's read it. Let's read it. For the sake of it. But it's a little bit more in this to back up what we just read about okay. Genesis 15 and 3 about Abraham. He's like, well, hey. The heir is going to be someone born in my house and not my own seed. He's basically inquiring. Yeah. Like the most high is going to fulfill it. Come on, come on. This is uh, back in uh, Hebrews 6 and uh, 14. It says, saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Mm-hmm. So that's just going into it. Come on, come on. Hey, great preacher. You want that Genesis 17? No, no, let's keep reading. Okay, come, come. All right, we are in verse four. Verse four. four. Genesis fifteen and four. And Abram said, uh, and, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, uh, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own vow shall be thine heir. Remember, he made this promise. Look, exactly. I already told you this. Remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful, man. Because I just wanted to just, like shoot a spirit, man. Yo, the power shot is written about from beginning to end. Yeah, this is talking about him. This is talking about him. He's the, the, the <laughs> actual seed. Yep, he's the yeah. seed that's talking about him. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's yeah, right. right up in the mm-hmm. spirit. Mm-hmm. It made you think. Mm-hmm. Right back mm-hmm. in the start of mm-hmm. seven, mm-hmm. seven, 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 seven and twelve. Yeah. Come, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, this is like, Are you good? Yeah. Verse five. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven. And tell the stars if thou be able to number them. He said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Exactly. So he's explaining, like, we all get it. Yeah, his name means father of a multitude. You can't count the stars in heaven, nor the sands in the sea. All right. And the offer of fulfillment of this because Israel is a big nation, but in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be immortal. And we're going to keep going. Non stop. So this promise that was given to Abraham is a heavy portion, man. Because he's not only just talking about within the near future from this account, but he's talking about to infinity and beyond. All right? That's why I always I said, you know, my house, in my house, I mean, eventually, exactly, I think that we, we're in our kingdom, we're in our glory. This earth is going to be able to really hold on. I mean, it's going to be 
course, you know, bigger, more approval, you know what I'm saying? But that's the reason why we have little kids and stuff out there. You know, and if I could just add a point on that, uh, but was, uh, during the time uh, when uh, Mike and Abraham, they were rolling together, they would have to like split weight, and they something was too much for the land that they were on the ground. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a good point. It's a good point. How much work can we do? We all have substance and we're going to have to have space, you know? Alright, verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. There we go. He believed in the Lord. And he spoke it and had it come to pass. We got to believe it. Man. That's what it boils down to. It's about faith. Go ahead. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Go ahead. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of earth of the Chaldees mm -hmm. to give thee this land to inherit. Look what I brought you through, bro. Believe. <laughs> Go ahead. And he said, Yahweh. Whereby shall I know that I shall inherit? There we go. Whereby shall I know I shall inherit? So he explained everything pertaining to him and his seeds before this. So now something has to take into effect. Because now Abraham's like, how shall I know? What's the sign of the token of this? <laughs> Verse 9. And he said unto him, Behold, I am the help of three years old. Uh-huh. And a she goat of three years old. Go ahead. And a ram of three years old. Go ahead. And a turtle dove. And a young pigeon. So now he's saying, gather these animals together. And the funny thing is, these are animals that are synonymous for what we use to sacrifice later on. Well, not even just later on, but they were sacrificed, you know, it was done with people. But, but it was the priest. This is kind of a great point. He's a priest. But, you know, going back to it, these are animals that are synonymous for sacrifice. These are lawful animals, and when you read Leviticus, these animals are named quite a bit. All right, go ahead. Verse ten, and he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst. Now, all right, you still got, you put you put a definition of a while ago that talked about dividing and something passing through, right? Can you please hold that again? Don't read it yet. Yeah. Can you read that again? Um, it's a point. So, okay, let's. Verse 10, and he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst. He divided them in the midst. Because God since you got your phone now, I know you, can you pull up that word divided in Genesis chapter 15? So he grabbed these, these six animals and he divided them in the midst. All right. And for the brothers that are just walking in, we're going into the, the topic of this lesson is the covenant. And when you go into the word covenant in the Hebrew, it's barayah. But when you go into the root word of covenant, it means to cut. Okay, so now we're going into the promise that was given to Abraham, and we're just expounding on it. And now Abraham is asking the question, what is going to be this sign to show about everything that you were told me? So now the Lord is like, get this, get that, get this, get that, and divide it, right? So this is the token of the Lord making his covenant with Abraham, all right, of that promise. You got that word division, Bible? Come, come, we're divided. Genesis 15 and 10. Yeah, this is uh, verse seven. Okay. It's uh, Bavara. Mm -hmm. It's H one three three four. It's to uh, an outline of, of the biblical usage to cut into, to cut into. So the Lord told Abraham, "All right, you want a sign, right, to show that this agreement is it, 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 it's what it is. Get this animal, get that, get this, get that, and cut it. Yeah. All right." Yeah, and the strongest definition, a primitive root to chop up, divide. To chop up, straightforward. Mm -hmm. Exactly. God. Go ahead. All right. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst. So he cut them up. Go ahead. And laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. Yeah, because they're they were probably small. These are big, nice sized animals. The heavens of a freaking cow. You know what I'm saying? So he had cut all things up. You know, go ahead. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Can you imagine Abraham just getting annoyed with birds? Did he get hell? Over here doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? He old already. <laughs> Running around birds. <laughs> Move! <laughs> I, just, I just pictured it in my head when I first read it. I thought it was funny. You know, if you watch that, right, you get annoyed, bro. He's like, come on, man. Let's do this. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Verse 12. 
And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abel. Okay, so now a deep sleep fell upon him after he sliced and diced these animals, after he cut Quit, uh, these animals. Quit, please, uh, huh. Jeremiah 34 and 18, and I will give, and I will give the men that transgress my covenant, which have not performed the words of the covenant which they had made before me, when they cut the calf in twain, Woo! and passed between the parts thereof. Uh. The princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem, the eunuchs and the priests, and all the people of the land which passed between the parts of the camp. So, parts between, passed. Please keep that in mind. You know, because we get some that was a dope precept. Mm -hmm. You know, can you keep reading that in Genesis 15, Bob? Uh, this is verse 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, mm -hmm. and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And what was his horror? Go ahead. And he said unto Abel, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Hey, uh, a mafia, what's this talking about right there? And he said unto Abel, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Going, uh, going to Egypt? That's right. A lot of people will go into that and think that it's talking about right now. But that's not what it's talking about. It's actually talking about the Israelites being captive in the land of Egypt for those 400 years. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All right. It says, And lo, a great and darkness fell upon them. And he said unto Abram, No of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them. Okay. And they shall afflict them 400 years. Mm -hmm. come, come. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Mm -hmm. And after that shall they come out with a great substance. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that's talking about after we had left the land of Egypt. You know, he's he's receiving this vision. It's a very horrific vision he's receiving. I'm talking yeah, about saying. super hard in the future. Yeah, bro. The Lord gave him a... He let him see what was going to happen to the Israelites, bro. He's seeing his children being persecuted and, and being, being, being beaten with rigor. He said it, bro. The Lord showed him this, bro. It's probably you know, years before that too. Yeah, it's almost right. No, it is coming. Yeah, like almost coming. And it, uh, but it says it in Exodus it was four hundred years prior. You know. Now remember what had taken place before he received his vision. He cut those beasts up, right? Go ahead. Uh, all right. <laughs> this is verse fifteen. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Mm -hmm. But in the fourth generation, mm -hmm. they shall come hither again. Mm -hmm. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace. So now he received this vision. Right after this vision, this, this vision says a smoking furnace. What did the smoking furnace do? And a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Passed between those pieces that he had cut. Right. So the Lord set the fire, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty much signified his spirit. You know what I'm saying? And it passed through that flesh. You know what I'm saying? Burnt it up like a sacrifice. All right. Go ahead, Elder. In the same day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abram. Boom. So after this taking place, he had cut that those animals in the fire passed through it. You see, you got the hell down there right there on that definition. Mm -hmm. Right afterward, he said, this is my, I'm establishing my covenant with you. Remember, Abraham asked him a question. He pretty much said, what is going to be pretty much the step of all that's taking place? And it didn't happen right away either. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we ask for certain things and we expect to hear it right away. But the Lord had let Abraham know hours in advance. He, he let him know later. And he showed it to him in a vision of a dream. You know what I'm saying? But through that action that had taken place, the cutting of that flesh, the fire passing through, that pretty much signified or confirmed that covenant that was given unto Abraham about the promise, about us being scattered as, as the stars in the sea and the stands of heaven. You know what I'm saying? So this action was done. The deal was sealed right there. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got a point. Yeah, this is a practical point. Even just with being like a confirmation of a marriage, when you go into a woman, you pop behind me. I was going to go Because that's what sex it goes yeah. into, to, to cut. <laughs> what does the word sex mean? He said cut. cut. Uh, you they trying to get that cutty? Yeah. But that, that yeah. also qualifies a marriage, though. Yeah. Good, good job, Ruben, the end of the lesson, mm -hmm. guys. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just playing. I'm just joking. 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 I'm just jo
In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word bariat is always thus translated. Bariat is derived from a root, which means to cut. Mm -hmm. And hence, a covenant is a cut with reference to the cutting or dividing of animals into two parts and the contracting parties passing between them. That's right. And fire in making a covenant. Mm -hmm. Spirit, man. You know, that's that that's that binding, you know. So that's yeah, it's a lot for bringing that up. And you know, for you brothers that just came in, you know what I'm saying, that's what we were brought up earlier. You know. But as we read this in Genesis the fifteenth chapter, this is the action that taking place to confirm and solidify that promise that was given unto Abraham when he asked that question. Go ahead, brother. I was trying to find it. This is Leviticus chapter nine. Chapter nine, verse I read and they put the fat upon the feet of the palm breast, and he burnt the fat upon the altar. And the breast and the right shoulder, Aaron weighed for a wave offering before your heart, as Moses commanded. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them, and came down from offering of the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offering. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people. And the glory of the hour appeared unto all the people. Mm. And their glory of the Okay. Verse 24. And there came a fire out from before Yahweh and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and mm -hmm. which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. Mm -hmm. Which that offering, when, when that fire came down and consumed that offering, it confirmed that Yahweh was pleased with that offering. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So you can just, uh, it makes me think about, you know, yeah, that with that offering in, in Genesis 15 chapter. Uh -huh. You know uh -huh. what I mean? That lets you know that Yahweh was watching outside was pleased with it. Right. Yeah. But, and, and remember, and you know, Tazama, you did a lesson going into this, and it was a very, very fun lesson going into pretty much offering up that strange fire, right? Abraham had asked the Lord this question as we're going into. And right after the Lord reconfirmed everything with Moses, it said that he believed in the Lord after that. Hey, that faith and that belief is what the Lord is looking for and it pleases him. Because after Abraham believed and was like, this is what that is, mm -hmm. the Lord had did that. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Did that. So before the key nucleus involved in all of this is faith. Is belief, and we have to remember the Lord never. And we understand this, but every time we go into things, I'm talking to myself too. Whatever we got going on, whether it's demons messing with you in your mind, whatever the case is, knowing the things that you can do to get rid of it, prayer, fasting, faith is the beginning of all of that stuff, huh? and constantly referring back to that promise that was made and meditating on it puts joy in your heart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like, um, like you was. Mm -hmm. You know, like what happened when he went out there to do the sacrifice with the uh, prophets of Baal, and then he was treated as a friend, like who God was with, right? You know, and then the Heavenly Father, he set that fire down from heaven, and he, they consumed that sacrifice. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because he believed. He believed, you know. You know, he proclaimed it boldly when you go into that account. That was just like, you know, with Daniel, uh, Bill and his reign. Yep, when the Lord burnt the niggas up. Oh, yeah, straight up. When all the niggas got burnt up, the niggas got food up and yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. Man, straight up. That was unpleasing. You know what I'm saying? Daniel was showing who, who, who God was real. Yeah. Man, beautiful points, brothers. Beautiful points. I hope you got come. Go ahead. Okay. And what, what verse you want in Genesis 15? Uh, 18. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Psalm 51 and 16. It says, But I desire is not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of the Most High are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O Yahweh, thou wilt not despise. And you remember, I mean, when you read this account of Genesis 15, they don't talk about the hell Abram was catching, but Abram was catching hell. 
Mm-hmm. You know? Genesis 15, it talked about, when you read up, what made it uh, righteous. What, why, why the most I count it is righteousness. Right. Right. What was it? Belief. Uh, belief. Oh, okay. okay. yeah. Belief. That's what counted righteous. So that, uh, that's, that's what it's talking about right there. Psalms. Come. That's what, you know, belief. These, you know, tradition, everything is just a part. It's, it's amplifying something that's uh, kind of written in the spirit. Yeah, straight up, straight up. Come you know? on. Uh, that's it. Right. This is uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. In the same day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abel, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river. The river Euphrates. Now, this is where you get that great Israel project. Mm-hmm. The, the, the rats. Oh, they get it from right there. They get it from this right here. Mm-hmm. Genesis 15, 18. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, The Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Gergesites and the Jebusites. Mm-hmm. That's where right. I got it. So, he clearly shows you, look, this is the promise. This is what we're going to do, solidify the promise and reconfirm it to him right afterward. This is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to put this offering on the table. We're going to do it like this. Hey, Lord, so what shall we know? Who is it? That the third, boom. It's the covenant. And he reestablished everything he said right afterward. You know? I got a quick preset. Okay, come, come. Okay. Genesis 17, the one says, When Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham. And said unto him, I am the mighty power. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Mm. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and mm. I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abel fell on his face and talked, and, and the most I talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. I find this interesting. When you go to that number nine, one of the definitions of it is like fruitful, you know, fruit like, you know, he was 99 years old when he was telling you, you'll see this going to be like this. Like, see at that point. Yeah, that's beautiful. Man, it is. See? Uh, it says, neither shall thy uh, name any more be called Abel, but thy name, but thy name shall be Abraham. Abraham. It says, For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful. That's crazy. (laughs) And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Mm. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee. Wow. In their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a power unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. So, the Lord had always remembered his covenant with Abraham. Yeah. Always. Even right now. To answer your question. To the seed after thee. God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I find it interesting that it says he's going to be a father of many nations, but then it says in the next verse he's going to be a God unto thee and to thy seed. That specifically seed. He's going to be the father of many nations, but yeah. the God of the nations Israel. That's right. Yeah, I got a quick, I got a quick precept. Got a quick precept. Come. This is Sirach chapter forty-four, verse uh, nineteen. It says Abraham was a great father of many people. Uh, in glory was there none like uh, unto him who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in, in his flesh. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. Mm. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations and his seed mm. and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and cause them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost parts of the land. And that goes right back to Revelation 7 and 9, where it goes to the 144,000. And then it goes, says, every nation and kindred, you know what I'm saying, shall pretty much be good. Uh, well, that, 
that nation, those, every nation, it's talking about these nations that we're reading about, which are the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. Well, 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 let me finish, because that goes right to what you just said. Verse 22, it says, With Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham his father's sake the blessing of all men and the covenant and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. Mm. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him inheritance and divided his portions among the 12 tribes that he part them. Here we go. I got you. Hold on. Genesis 35 and 9. And the most I appeared unto Jacob again when he came to Mount Moriah and blessed him. And the most I said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, mm. but Israel shall thy name uh, yeah. shall be thy name. Yeah. And he called his name Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Most High said unto him, I am the uh, I am the true. God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. Boom. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, mm -hmm. and kings. Shall come out of thy loins. See the same thing he told Abraham is telling to Jacob, mm -hmm. you know, which is something that's passed down through your seed, chosen seed, man. Uh huh. It says, "And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it, mm -hmm. and to thy seed after thee will I give the promise, the kingdom of heaven, the promise." The land of Israel. Right. Oh, yeah. No greater Israel project. No, the, the real deal, baby. Right. You know? Is there more to that? Yeah. Okay, come on. You had a precept too. Talk to you said you were going to bring it up? Uh, nah, nah. Okay. We'll okay. finish this up back oh, in Genesis 17 and uh, eight. eight. And I will give, and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein. Thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their power. And the Most High said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, that uh, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you. And I see that after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Cutting of the flesh. That's right. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Mm -hmm. So right. just going back to that word covenant. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the word bariat. It right. goes back to the word bar bara, which means to cut. That's right. Yep. That's or right. cut it. Heavy. You yeah. know, and you see that example in sacrifice that was made. We had to part. The calves, mm -hmm. you know, or, or the ram, or whatever it is, that part of it into. Right. Mm -hmm. And then pass it to him. What, what happened to you? How shall what happened to him? He had to be cut. Mm -hmm. He had to be sacrificed. That's right. That's right. Right. And right. that initiated uh -huh. a new testament. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Which one? Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Blood shall be to you for a token mm -hmm. upon the house mm -hmm. where he goes. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. You see, what happens with the what, what is the blood? The blood is pretty much what binds us. That's what binds that covenant. It's when that's it's the blood. More so, it says the cut, and we understand that. But after you do that cut, you have that blood that's used for it, which represents life. The token. It's the life. You know, yeah, because I mean, in order to have the blood to put upon the door for us, you had to cut the sack. Exactly. Exactly. You know. So it says, and the blood shall be to you. For a token upon the houses where right you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. You know that's it, though. You know that because it talks about it says in verse eleven of Genesis seventeen, it says the token or a sign, right, of the covenant between me and you, which is going to be this circumcision, mm -hmm. this cutting of the flesh. That's right. It's going to be a bind between me and you and your seed that. That's right, that's right. That's why the Lord, that's why Yahweh, I shouldn't Yahweh Shah doesn't want us to mark our flesh when doing anything up to that nature. Because one, that's what the heathen do. Mm -hmm. But also, too, even in the world when I was going to church, my auntie mentioned this. That's you're, you're making a covenant with something. You put that mark on you, you cut your flesh, and that blood comes forth. Mm -hmm. That's a covenant that you're making with whoever's the one that's doing it, or whatever you're allying yourself that you're putting on there. Right. You know? And in a marriage, too, dealing with a woman, that's how you know that she's a virgin. Because mm -hmm. when you cut it for the first time, that, that blood is supposed to be the token of the beginning. Right, that's right. To really level up on that the sacredness of that covenant. That's right. Between the man and that woman. That's, that's right. right. Come, come. 
Lord is bad, man. He, bro, he's even in the Italian mafia too. If I can mm-hmm. say this, I'm in the mob shows and that's that lifestyle. Keep cool mm-hmm. on the left side, but they, when, whenever you get initiated, when, whenever you become a made man, you, they, they, they cut. Mm-hmm. You know, blood covering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like blood brothers. Yeah, yeah. 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 They yeah. Damage yeah. each other over. Yeah. No, no. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Was Okay, so we, now we tackle the whole meaning of covenant to that degree and how it was given to the children of Israel. Okay, and the Lord always remembered his covenant of what he made with our forefathers. Mm-hmm. So I got this really quick. You got that in the second Ezra, right? I'm going to bring this out really quick in Exodus chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 23. All right, it's, it says, oh, yeah. And it came to pass in the process of time, it's all good, that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage. All right, so we were getting out. Do four hundred years, we was getting dusted. It said we served those Egyptians with rigor. You know what I'm saying? When you go into that word rigor, it means very, very harsh way that they treated us while we were in slavery. That's why this place is synonymous with being Egypt too, because we served these Edomites in a very harsh fashion like that with rigor. We built it up. We built it up just like we built it up. We built up this time. Mm-hmm. Not only did we build it up, we were then assimilated into Egyptian culture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Just like uh, we were assimilated into so called American culture. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on. You were for a second? Oh, I right. talked about eating up the leeks freely. We ate up bread freely when we was in Egypt. Yeah, after, yeah, yeah. after a process of time, Jake was assimilated. You messed that in your lesson, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, come on. Okay. Uh, yeah, come on. Yeah, um, we, we were part of that society pretty much. We were getting that thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? saying? Yup. Gone. This is Exodus chapter 2, verse 24. And the Most High heard their groanings and remembered his covenant he made with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. So the groanings and all that, he heard the covenant. But you think of it, it took 400 years, which at the end of the day, it was spoken of and was prophesied to happen. But I just thought about a quick one, just now, actually, really quick. This is um, Exodus chapter 3, and I'm going to read this here in verse uh, 18. So this is an example of Moses at the burning bush, and the Lord has let Moses know pretty much what to do. All right? And he told him to bring elders, the elders of Israel with you, and speak unto Pharaoh. You know, Moses, Aaron, and the rest of the elders. It says in Exodus 3 and 18, And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come. Thou and the elders of Israel into the king of Egypt, ye shall say unto them, Yahweh God of the Hebrews has met with us, and now let us go, we beseech you, three days' journey into a wilderness, that we may sacrifice to Yahweh our God. The reason why I wanted to go into that, because when we were in Egypt those 400 and something years, like today, all right, what was one of the main things the heathen did to take us away from our power? They took away the temple. They took away the sacrifice. Now, while we was in Egypt, I'm not going to say if we were sacrificing or not, but I will say it was probably more difficult to do it because we were under captives in Egypt, just like right now. You know, and it makes sense. The Lord wasn't really, he was there, but, you know, just like right now. You know what I'm saying? He's here with us, but it was a point in time we was getting beat down. It's that a third, and then he woke up the prophets. You know what I'm saying? But that sacrifice is what links us to the Lord. And whenever the heathen had taken that away from us, that was a huge link that was taken away from our power. You know, that's why I wanted to bring that example out. They said, can we leave? We beg of thee that we may go into the wilderness and we may sacrifice unto the Lord. Made me think of what made them just ask if they could do this to sacrifice. Because it's obvious they weren't able to do it where they was at like that the way they were supposed to. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Hosea chapter three. Hosea chapter three, verse uh, <clears throat> verse four. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice. And without they shall abide many days. Now this is a this is talking about like before this time now. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have no more kings, no more sacrifices. Stand up there. How was that sacrifice? You know, there was a point of time before you out of shot. Who's, you know, who's not? Go ahead and try to sacrifice without an image, without an ephod, without an ephod, without a high priest. You know, because the high priest was the one. He was the he, he was the mediator between us and the Lord. All right, go ahead and without a teraphim. And you remember, Abraham was a priest 
They played those duties. Isaac was, Jacob was, and even their sons probably played, you know, when they were in the know, they played, they had to offer sacrifice. The spirit was on them. But in Egypt, all that it is, you winged it. You hella winged it. Bro, it was just like no access to it was like uh it was like this uh, Egyptianized, just like being Hellenized, just like being Americanized. Yes. Same thing, man. That's right. Over and over again, man. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Jake was pretty much true. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. It says, uh last verse it says, verse five, it says, Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek Yahweh their power mm-hmm. and David their king. Okay. Right. And shall fear Yahweh and his goodness in the latter days. Right now, man. And it all goes back to that covenant that was established. Yeah, that's why that mark of the beast, man. Yeah. Yeah. That decision. Yeah. That, 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 bro, exactly. That's why that has to be yeah. it. Yeah, it's that covenant of the world. The covenant of the world. It ain't gonna just no idea. Man. No, they're gonna put a chip inside if you use that chip. That's a yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, I thought about that when I was going to listen. Like, oh, shoot. It only makes sense, man. Yeah. It only makes sense. That's yeah. Right. Come on, bro. I thought it was spiritual. They don't cut, bro. They literally don't have the understanding. It's a blessing, bro. Yeah. You were blessed with this. Ain't, ain't nobody just going to think to put these things together and do it. And we say it's out of humility. Because the Lord, could, he gave it, he take away any time. That's why we continue to fear him and all that. But he blessed us, bro. That's right. <laughs> he blessed us, bro. Mm-hmm. You know? Like the elites, man, like the, uh, the, like the way they do it on the left-hand side, you know, they, they physically cut a child to get their blood, to get their energy, to get their life. Exactly. They, they, they know, like, like uh, Don Ariana mentioned it uh, yesterday, or I got strong one of y'all, but pretty much this night, man, these elites, man, like, they know, you know what I'm saying, like, they know your how. they know about that it's a heavenly father, they know about, like, sacrificing, they, left hand they just do it on the left-hand side, right. yeah. pretty something that, <laughs> but our team on that, that said, they said, seek your how the power, and David the king, you know, it makes me think, like, when, when, uh, when David brought the Ark of the Covenant back to, when he brought it to Jerusalem, mm-hmm. You know, what he was the first thing he did and he offered a sacrifice. That's, that's right. right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? First thing, the first thing he did was offer a sacrifice. That's definitely fucked. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, kind of, kind of sacrifice. All right. Beautiful points, brothers. So, we read pretty much of what was going on in Egypt for those 400 years around that time. You know, the Lord had risen up Moses to go and deliver those people. But I had another had second verse in chapter 14, though. All right, because as Moses had led us all out of the out of Egypt, and we all went to the wilderness, where did they go to? The first place, one of the places they stopped at, the main place, Mount Sinai. You know what I'm saying? They went up there, and Moses was up there, and what happened? He received instruction from the Heavenly Father. Not just any instruction, either. Literally divine instruction. He spoke to the Most High face to face. That's as it's written, you know? So he wasn't just no normal guy. Like, when he was up there on the mountain, he received everything, you know, and he mimicked what was built, the, tab, the tabernacles, everything that was built down there off of what he'd seen up there. You got it, though. All right. This is uh, Second Ezra chapter 14. I started at verse 3. Then said he unto me, well, I started at the top. That's a set stage. All right. Mm-hmm. He said, and it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under an oak, and behold, uh, and behold, there came a voice out of the bur- uh, out of the bush over against me, and said, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, Here am I, Lord. And I stood upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses, okay. hmm. and talked with him, when my people served in Egypt. Mm-hmm. And I sent him, and led my people out of Egypt, mm-hmm. and brought him up to the Mount Sinai. Where I held him by me a long season and told him many wondrous things. He told him many wondrous things when he was up there for a season. He was something with the Lord, bro. He was up there 40 days, 40, 40 nights, 40 didn't days. eat, didn't drink. He was literally being fueled off the spirit. Literally, bro. The Lord was giving him a heavy dosage of the spirit, bro. <laughs> Go ahead, huh? 
and told him many wondrous things, and showed him uh, showed him the secrets of the times. Showed him the secrets Woo! of the times. All the way up to now. Exactly. All the way up to now. Exactly. So Moses received the secret of the times, like the other said, all the way up till now. You remember the first five books we read it about Abraham, the circumcision, the covenant, all of that. Moses wrote that. That was Moses that written it. Mm -hmm. So Moses had the understanding on the covenant, who it was meant for, the bigger picture of everything. Bro, he went into numbers and ordinances. Bro, he went into the people. He went into the laws, statutes, and commandments. Yes, bro. Bro, Moses was receiving. They thought he was down. They were. They thought he was down. Yeah, they were like, man, I don't know where Moses went. They were like, bro, they thought he was down. Moses was up there getting fed, bro. He seen Moses. Who knows? He might have seen this conversation. Bro, he the Lord showed him many secrets, bro. He saw him. He saw him in the creation, bro. Bro, he wrote about it. Exactly. He did it. He told Moses about us on the highways and byways preaching right now. Great millstone, all of that. He told Moses, Mo Moses already knew slave shit. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Mm -hmm. So if Moses knew all these things, Moses, what, what, what happened when, we was up, when he was up there? You know what I'm saying? He received the laws and his commandments on stone tablets. Because remember, it was oral back then. It was oral. So he had actually imprinted it on the stone tablets for us to keep. And what was in there is pertaining to that covenant. We have the Torah, Genesis, Exodus. Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. We have those five that was given unto Moses. So, the Heavenly Father gave Moses his word and told it to write it because throughout time, we got beat out of us. Egypt, 400 years. Moses knew that we was going to keep going into captivity. He knew we was going to keep going into captivity. And in order for the word to stay within us, the word to stay with us, we had this as a remembrance right here, these scrolls, these scriptures. Before that, it was oral. We was dusted off, man. But that's why that was so important that the Lord had gave Moses this word, man. Because we have this right now. And the covenant was pertaining to that, man. Uh, what verse are you going to help me? I'm still at five. Okay. All right. Uh, second Edges 14 and 5. And told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times and the end. And the end. So right now, Moses received all of it. That's why Moses wrote Deuteronomy 28. You're going to go to captivity to Egypt? Give my shit. You already knew. No man shall buy thee. No man shall redeem thee. He spoke about the fiery law that was going to come from heaven 10,000 the saints. They had just gotten a little from Egypt. They ain't going to go back. I'm going to hit that whole game. Moses was up there in front of him. Like, gosh, dang, man. You know? You know? Because this was, he went, if the Lord Work that through him. Right. That deliverance of yep. Egypt. He was like, damn, we need to go back, back. Then all wow. that is just now. <laughs> Bro, all that is remembered to right now is still keeping past over being in Egypt. Oh, so that's heavy. It was magnificent the way we got delivered from the land of Egypt, man. Yeah, that's heavy. So Moses is like, all oh, is all over again. You know? He already knew, but we but had what's written. He said, what? Yeah, he said, what? Exactly. Yep, come on. So mm -hmm. all this was written down to keep ways to follow the Father of the Lord, what we're supposed to do in the ancient scrolls of our forefathers. The documents, when you go into the book of Genesis, that word Genesis goes to the word records. You know, so all of this was given unto Moses, you know what I'm saying, to write this for us to remember. Okay, that's it on that in 2nd Ezra. Um, can somebody pull up Exodus chapter 24, start at verse 4. Yep. Moses received the understanding on Mount Sinai, the tablets, the law, statutes, commandments, the records. Yeah. The Lord gave him all of this information. The future. Yeah, we, when we read there in Exodus 24, it's a progression of understanding. You got to go all the way to like chapter 36. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You right. To, to understand. Go. This is Exodus chapter 24, verse 4. And it says, And Moses wrote all the words. Of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built it an altar under the hill. Built an and altar under the hill. What is the altar used for? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. So he read all the words. He wrote down all the words. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And then he went to all. He went to build up an altar. Uh -huh. okay. And twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. There you go. It ain't according to everybody. It's always twelve, twelve, twelve. Mm -hmm. Always symbolically represents the seed of Abraham, man. The twelve tribes of Israel. Always. Mm -hmm. Twelve tribes, twelve apostles, twelve this. It all goes back to Israel at the end of the day. Twelve stones. 
Remember Jordan? Yes, you did. Come. Yep. Go ahead. Verse 5. Same thing you read about in the book of Revelation. Revelation, yep. Yeah, like 12 yeah. stones. Exactly. Yeah. He did. Right. Mm -hmm. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offer burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. Can you read that again, Lord? Kind. And he said, and he's. Sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace, so peace now, offerings. What did they do? They offered offerings and sacrifice going back to cutting the cut. Kind. Right? So now these young men offered up sacrifices and all these things. Go ahead. Kind. And sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to unto Yahweh. Right. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins. Okay, go ahead. And half of the blood he sprinkled in. Uh, on the altar. You sprinkle the blood on the altar. Go ahead. What does that blood represent? The life. That right. finding agent which brings us close to yeah. the Lord through that cutting action. Right. They cut the, they cut the oxen and then with the blood Moses sprinkled it on the altar. And, and I'm he, sorry. If I make you look at it, I'll make you take a line. Exactly. Exactly. It's just a precept for that for the blood being a life. Mm -hmm. Is uh, uh, Genesis chapter 9 Verse 4 it says But flesh with the life thereof Which is the blood thereof Shall ye not eat yeah. Okay uh, Going back to uh, Exodus 20, uh, 24 And 6 It says Moses took half of the blood And put it in basins and half of the blood He sprinkled on the altar And he took the book of the covenant And read in the audience Of the people So why did he do this? Now he took the book of the covenant and read it. He read it after the cutting. After all of this, and all this was what was read. So what's taking place right here between Moses and the children of Israel is this marriage. You know? This is the contract right here. This is when the contract of the covenant is being reestablished through the children of Israel. The same knowledge, the same promise that was given unto Abraham. This is the action that had taken place for this to be done. This is the purchase. As we were a purchased possession, as we read about it, this is the example of the nation of Israel becoming a purchased possession. But it was a carnal representation, it's a, similitude. Of the actual, a similitude of the actual purchasement. And Moses already understood this. But Moses knew he had to do this. Moses, you read about it in Deuteronomy 18 where it says there was a prophet that was to come like unto Moses. All right. And what makes him like that? Because. You know, he, he had that, uh, well, one, you know, he had suffered the Heavenly Father personally, but, you know, he was going to deliver the children of Israel. He was a mediator. Moses did this right here to signify, confirm this purchase for the Most High Israel as Yahweh Shai completed it. Yahweh Shai fulfilled, fulfilled this. This right here is the, how can I word this, um, the tutorial, and Yahweh Shai was the actual way it was done. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. Go ahead, I. Con. And it says in verse uh, 7, and he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And he said, all that Yahweh has said uh, will we do and be obedient. This, see, this is the agreement to this contract right here. Right? Okay. That's why they said it. They read the book to him and he said, look, yeah, we're going to do this. This is what needs to be done. We're going to do it. Even though Jake was tripping and they went off, at least it was written down in a book. Right. Back then, again, it was oral traditions. Slavery getting beat down for 400 years in Egypt. Bro, they didn't have to sacrifice. You know, Moses knew that we was going to go into slavery. First and foremost, the Lord already knew this. He written it. And he explained it to Moses. And he gave Moses this documentation to write down so we would be able to read this even while we were in captivity right now. Remember in uh, 2 Ezra 14, it said he gave Moses even vision of the end. Thinking that this was going to be it. And they read this to him, and they said, "We're gonna to agree to it." This is being that purchased possession, man. Now, what had to take place first again was the cutting of that flesh, that blood, because that constituted the marriage. All right, y'all made the statement earlier. You know, when you go even into a husband and into a wife, technically, marriage is coming together with your wife, and she really has to be a virgin. That, that's why your house shop pretty much said, if you look at a girl, you can make a Because there ain't none of these whole virgins right now, man. They've already been made, they've already been made together and made a covenant for a man. Because they cut that, they, 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 they don't cut when you do it. You know? 
So these women are these women are hoes or harlots. That's not the point of the lesson. Exactly. But when a man and a woman come together and he breaks her virginity and they make the blood which the tokens of her virginity, that solidifies that covenant between husband and wife. Okay? Really quick, can somebody pull up um, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14 off the show? Alright, Jeremiah chapter 3, it says 14, right? Come. It says, Turn, O backsliding children, said the Go ahead. For I am married unto you. For I am married unto you. How did the Heavenly Father make himself married unto us? Through the cutting of that flesh, through the covenant, that division, right? Go ahead. And I will take you, one of a city and two of a family. But wait, he's talking to Israel. No, he's talking to about the elect right here. He said, I shall take two of a city, two of a family. This is talking about the elect. Go ahead. And two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Now we understand the Lord is married to the whole nation of Israel because the covenant was given unto them. But the first fruits of this covenant, of this promise, who's going to receive? The weightier matters of the promise, all right, is the elect. So when it comes to anybody being married back to the Lord, first and foremost, it starts with the elect. Okay? And we're reading about this. When he says, For I am married unto you, he's married to Israel, but right now specifically, he's talking about the chosen. That's why it says, I will take two out of a city, two out of a household, and then what? Thinking back up earlier. Come. You know, being the first fruit of being those chaste virgins. That's right. Prepare for you. Exactly. Exactly. Verse 15 it says, And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Uh huh. You know, the funny thing is, when we went to that word covenant, the first time it said to eat. You know, just saying, and you're outside the lamb. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when you go to that word covenant, when Kadra first put it up, it said to eat. You know, so now we're being fed. Hey, you know, I said, Whoever thirsts, whoever hungers. You know, mm-hmm. so it's basically yeah. what we're hungry and thirsty no more. That's right, taste it. That's right. Beautiful point. Come on, straight up. What do you say? Eat my blood, drink my blood. That's right. Eat the whole room. The whole room. We still gotta get that shot. Two. Shut that. Come on. Can you just keep going? You got a precept out of you, my friend? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> it was tripping out. I didn't imagine that coming. I didn't imagine that coming. The only way you're going to live forever is to eat my flesh and drink my blood and run your mind. Wow. Chocolate. Now you got the niggas on YouTube and Woodbird. Yeah. Who's the line? Who's the line? Back in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 16, it says, And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. And those days, say Yahweh, they shall say no more. The Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh. Now, pause really quick. We were going back to ancient Egypt, you know, always alluding back to it. And it took 400 years for the Lord to finally come. You know, now remember in Egypt, we was growing. You know what I'm saying? We was growing to the point where Pharaoh was like, lock these dudes, people up. You know, in 400 years, we just kept going. When you read about it in Exodus, the second chapter, the reason why Pharaoh wanted to start, wanted to start killing those firstborn babies, you know, because at the rapid rate they was they was going. Like when he first went to those women to kill those babies when they were giving birth to kill those boys, the women pretty much said, they so fruitful when we go in there, babies already delivered. Yep. They just popping out. You know? <laughs> exactly. They they, sing, they they institutionalized Jake just to raise the right another gen. Yeah. So was right. And, and the kicker was the kicker was the reason why was, one of the reasons we was multiplying so fast is because it said the more they put on you, we the more we, you know what I'm saying? So it was their fault. Yeah. Like, like stop. Like, right. bro, they don't right. stop. Okay, we well, ain't gonna yeah. stop. Straight up. It's kind of, it, it goes in because. The Lord waited. He waited and waited and waited and waited and waited until we, we were at the height of our fruitfulness. In order for him to say, Moses, like, boom. You know what I'm saying? So you look at it today, just growing, 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 growing. You know what I'm saying? Throughout time. And now the Lord got all this stuff popping off right now, man. And that's why I wanted to explain that, because that's what you just said that you just read. You know what I'm saying? But well, keep going. Read right. that again, Bible Shock. Yeah, verse 16, Jeremiah 3 and 16. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, said Yahweh, when you at the height of your uh, of your uh, posterity, they shall say no more. 
the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Neither shall they come shall they come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall they be done, neither shall that be done anymore. Right. You know, we don't have the actual Ark of the Covenant no more, you know, we don't have it's the actual tabernacle no more. We don't we don't have it. We have Yahweh Shah. That's right. Which represents all of that. That's right. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 17, and at that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of Yahweh, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it uh -huh. to the name of Yahweh uh, to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. So this is when we're perfected. You know, we read about the covenant way back was given to Abraham, how you were going to be given this land, you were going to be fruitful. This is it, the kingdom of heaven, man. You know, that was the promise that was given unto our fathers. Complete yep. dominion, complete rulership. And this was the knowledge that all of our fathers had. And they passed it down to children. And what started that? Yahushua started that. All right? Because Yahushua was that natural yeah. heir that we were going to, 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 to re solidify the covenant, which makes him a prophet unto Moses. But now, if somebody, somebody pull up like John See, chapter 19, do, verse 34, I put it on the whole world. John 19, 34. Yeah, John 19, 34. Because we went into the cutting and how that's what pretty much constitutes the covenant. And then we went into marriage. That's why in Jeremiah 3 it says, For I am married unto you. You know, and how is he married unto us? Through the cutting of that flesh, the spilling of that blood. All right, Moses sprinkled in the altar and read from the book. And that's what they said we will do. You know, that purchase me. Somebody got that in John? Okay. John chapter 19, verse 34. One of the soldiers with his pierced side. Well, one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. Why did Yahushua's side get pierced? Can any brother, younger brother, mention this? Cutting of the flesh. It was the cutting of the flesh. But you remember. But no bones should be broken. There we go. That's it right there. Yahushua's bones wasn't broken, so he pierced them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, hurry, you get them down. Read those verse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come straight up. Um. Yeah, verse 33. But when they came to Yahweh Shai and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. They broke not his legs. You know what I'm saying? Because they had to be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. You know what I'm saying? That Passover lamb yeah. wasn't supposed to break his break any bone in. That's right. Just supposed to roast it whole. Uh-huh. Is that what? Is that it? Yeah, that's exactly. Yep. Straight up. Straight up. And right after that lamb was roasted, you ain't, you're right after you cut up in that mug and eat it. I got you. Know, you. Man, come. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 12. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it, and it shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. And the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. And this is the law of the meat offering. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, before the altar, and he shall take of it his handful of the flour of the meat offering, and of the oil thereof, and all the frankincense which is upon the meat offering, and all, and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor, even the memorial of it uh, unto the Lord. Can you imagine how good that smelled, bro? Well, frankincense, lamb already smelled good. Well, frankincense with it? Bro. It says, and the remainder thereof shall Aaron and his sons eat with unleavened bread, shall it be eaten in the holy place, in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation, of the congregation they shall eat it. So only Aaron's sons were able to eat of this sacrifice right here. Makes you think the Last Supper, who was feasting with Yahushua? The prophets and probably his disciples, which are priests under the order of Melchizedek, which is what we do. That's why it says, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. That's right. You know, we represent the sons of Aaron on a spiritual matter. Yahweh is the high priest now, is the actual high priest, and where his, well, Lord will be those men, and where his heirs, it calls him the everlasting father in Isaiah 9. Right. So we all pretty much sun like figures to Yahweh right. right. You know? It says, It shall not be baked, bacon with leaven. I have given I have given it unto them for their portion of my offering made by fire. It is most holy, as is the sin offering, and as and as the trespass offering. 
Mm -hmm. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat it. It shall be a statue forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord mm -hmm. made by fire. Everyone that touches them shall be holy. Mm -hmm. An example. We say this is going to be a statue for many generations. Bro, this is only an example of what we're doing right now. That, all that was just an example. It was holy. It's righteous. The Lord wanted it done that particular way. But that was a similitude of what we're doing right now. It was an example of it. And it says anybody that comes in contact with you, holy to. Yeah. This word spreads, bro. And if the serpent said uh, in uh, John 17, I think, let me just grab it real fast. We're talking about the 72 our word. Uh, you can be like 21. Leviticus 6, 7, 8, 9. Really kind of goes into the different all ranges. Come on. Okay. <coughs> come on, come on. I got something real quick. Okay. The uh, the Tha in the Hebrew alphabet, it's like an X. You know, you put your signature mm -hmm. where the X is. So. Mm -hmm. The Tha is the first word in Tawarwa, the law. Basically, that was the Lord putting his mark, you know. Ooh, Israel, you know. Mm -hmm. right. He put his signature on Israel. Because yeah. you know what I like when you sign your name, yeah. you put that X right there. But mm -hmm. well, the Tha is sort of like a, that X. Mm -hmm. Look at it. It's, it. It basically is a mark, a sign, a monument. <laughs> like Ba Yah. Yeah. Uh, ba House Yah. Is the hand hold Tha. Mm -hmm. Wow. Covenant, basically. Mm -hmm. Agreement. The house that holds the agreement. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 This is John, St. John, chapter 19, verse 34. One, but one of the soldiers with a, uh, with a spear pierced the side. And forthwith came there out blood and water. So he didn't break his knees, but he pierced him. All right? The house I was pierced, and blood and water came out. So that blood represents life. Mm -hmm. But in order for a covenant to be established with us, that piercing had to happen. He had to be cut. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Isaiah 53. He had to, only by his bruise, only by his wound, his cutting, were we naturally healed. Mm -hmm. When this was all given to Abraham, when all this was given unto Moses, they already understood this. Again, remember, Enoch prophesied about Yahushua. So they already understood that this person had to come, had to be cut in the flesh, who was going to be the son of God, who was going to deliver this seed. Yeah. That was, it, had, it was already there. That was part of that word that was given unto our father. Adam. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was Someone about does. Yeah. Yep. So it does. So it's at 49? Genesis 49. Because you got to think, in Isaiah 9, it talks about the son. Uh, that's given. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the first time that was mentioned in right. Israel. They've been sure. talking about that. Right. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. He not prophesied. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So it's yeah. He he, he was always there. Yep. 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 Always, man. And if I can make a point too, when he was pierced too, that um, symbolized as a token of the upgrading of the covenant through the spirit. Come. Because we start off, we know that through the spirit, the house shot Adam. Mm -hmm. Like what I read in our first Corinthians 15. In 45, it says, and so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul mm -hmm. through the covenant. Right. And then it says, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Mm -hmm. So that token of him being pierced, that symbolized that everything being upgraded to come right. right, upgraded to right. spirit. Mm -hmm. You know? And then that marriage, that, that, that right there was a sign of that marriage that Yahweh Shah has with his elect mm -hmm. that he prayed for. That's that marriage, that cutting up the flesh, that blood. That's right. You know? Did you have a precept about that one? Uh, God. Okay. Um, Hebrews 9 and 22. And almost all things are by the law of hers with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. No, it, without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. And that heavenly sacrifice was your house shot. Right. He fulfilled the whole law. That's why the law is very tedious and complex, but it's really interesting once you read how certain things was done. Because a lot of those were symbolic references to Yahweh. 
A lot of them were, you know, because again, Moses knew this. The Lord had him, Yahweh had him, and when he spoke to him, he had him do certain type of things, a particular way to pretty much use as a similitude of Yahweh shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to be Ephesians, bro. He beats his chapter five. All right, what, what, uh, what verse? Starting at verse 28. Uh, I'm sorry, 25. Come. Uh, okay. So now we're going, we went into Yahweh shot was pierced, he was cut. Priest Yadaka said that was an upgrade to the covenant. And through that cutting, the elect was, you know, through that blood, mm -hmm. were cleansed. Well, the elect are cleansed, but only those men. Yep. And now we're gathered back together. It's that like marriage. Okay? That's right. Go ahead. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Mashiach also loved the church. He's using marriage as an example, and this is true. So, you know, I don't got no wife and no woman, but you brothers know this, that dude. Yeah. You know, y'all taught us to, you know, so, you know. Go ahead. And gave himself for it. Go ahead. Verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. All right. The house I was pierced. Water and blood came out. Yeah. That represented us being cleansed. I got to put the priest up really quick before we continue. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. And let's see here. It's going to be in verse. Uh, oh, there we go. Verse 5. It says, Revelation 1 5. But from Yahweh Mashiach, who was the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. You know, that's through that action of him being pierced, that right there made us that purchased possession. Mm -hmm. All right. When he says pretty much I bought you with a price, that blood was that price. Yep. All right. That covenant, that cutting, that was the reestablishment of the upgrade yep. of that covenant. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like basically that that was this token of the propitiation to allow us access back to the That's right. Ooh. That's right. Yeah, that's crazy right. because that's the, uh, one of the tokens that happened. When the water was turned to blood in, in uh, Exodus, mm. hey, hey, that's very interesting for the priest. Uh, hey, this is um, Romans three and uh, twenty-four. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Hashem Mashiach, whom the Most High had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to mm -hmm. declare His righteousness for the remissions. Remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of the Most High. And our fathers knew this, bro. Man. They knew this. This was a, a, a this was a word that was just passed down orally about what was all this that was to take place. You know what I'm saying? The Lord chose few guys to really heavily expound to. You know, and Moses he had chose to be that vessel to reestablish and write about all this stuff in a way of a riddle, a similitude. You know, just for your house shot to come back and actually really play out what Moses had done in the carnal way, your house shot played it out through the spirit. Yeah, that's right, real quick. Come. Verse mm -hmm. nine, five, six. This is the this tea that came by water and blood. You know, yeah. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Mm -hmm. This and it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. Beautiful, beautiful man. <laughs> After that, we're going to get back to that. Second Corinthians 11, I'll start verse 1. Would to the Most High, you could bear with me a little of my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with God and jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin. That's the spirit you brought that precept out of. Because it goes right in what we're about to read there. You know, to one husband. Who is your house shot? And what is the act of a husband and wife coming together? The marriage. All right? The cutting Cut. sex. Mm -hmm. The cutting of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know? Now, we understand it's with, with your house size in a different way, but still, when the Lord made everything, he had a meaning and a purpose behind it, man. Yeah, to be, to, to be uh, one with uh, your house size. That's right. That's right. Mind, that, that, that reminds me of... Uh, yeah, how shall my shout? Mm -hmm. Also being you. That's right. Of the uh, the word for uh, cleave in uh, in the last one called Dobson. What? The bop. Mm -hmm. The cleave will come work. Mm -hmm. So you know, you didn't bid for marriage. 
You know what I'm saying? That's that's the goal. You you won now. Come. So that's the that's the end goal. Come, come. That's right. That's right, brother. Did y'all go on that? That's, just, that's, mm-hmm. right. that's why fornication and adultery is your best man. Straight up. Right. You're breaching. You're clearly breaching that contract. Yeah, that yeah, man. Man. I was thinking of something too. That's why the Lord is gonna destroy our people who accept that chip because that's making the covenant mm-hmm. straight up. Taking that cut and right. the corrupt up. That's right. That's mm-hmm. why it says uh, the name of the beast. Yep. Because you're putting his name on you when you take mm-hmm. his mark. Right? Man. He's Ooh. putting his name on you. The most high's name. Wow. That's so, six exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You're putting his name on you. His signature, yeah. like he was winning too early. Yeah. The name mm-hmm. of the beast. Mm-hmm. The people be like, what do you mean by the name? Well, it's basically you taking on his whole vibration yeah. and putting it on you when you take his mark. Mm-hmm. Straight up. But that's why we're crying out to the Lord because we're already in control. Mm-hmm. We're crying out. And he's trying to rape us, basically, as the woman. That's being I- you know yeah. how in the law, yep. like the woman who crying out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yep, 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 to cry out. Hey! Hey, Susanna! Hey, Susanna! Bro! That would be a lot of good things. Yeah, it's like, damn! Verse 3, it says, but I, fear, <laughs> but I fear, at least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through her subtility, so your mind should be corrupted. <laughs> From the simplicity that is in the Mashiach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This time, your Yahweh is going to be there. He ain't going to be defiled this time. Yeah, that's right. He's going to be there. He's going to be like right there. Nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's straight up. That's good. Man. Yeah. yeah there's, there's, there's more to that. There's heavy points that's just been made. But the lesson's on this whole Yeah, yeah. Just, I'm going to. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. You were reading it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, my bridge is fast. Come. That's respect. <laughs> this is back in Ephesians 5, verse 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spots or wrinkles. Now, remember, he was talking about the relationship of the husband and the wife, and how you treat your, your, your significant other is the way that Yahweh treats his church, which is a, a respect. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. And think about that. How, how the Heavenly Father treat Israel. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Just like Pops, man. Mm-hmm. Israel is 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 is, is the, Israel is the chosen. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. The Heavenly Father and the house shot, they won. That's the that's the wife. You see? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, was, that, 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 that marriage is very important. Mm-hmm. That marriage is very important. Man. Come on. Straight up. They're coming, like you said, going into the whole lesson. Come on. That's right. Back in verse 27. Or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. All right, I'm talking about the union. Yeah, go ahead. Verse twenty-eight. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. So now he's saying ought men are to love their wives as their own body. Okay, you're talking about loving because you're one. Okay, you unify. Go ahead. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Remember. You brought up the point. That's that relationship the most I had with us. Well, you got to, if you keep reading down, he'll say it. Yep. He'll, mm-hmm. he'll tell you what he's really talking about. God. Verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, right? But nourish, nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord, the church. So you cherish your wife, you cherish your significant other, because that's a similitude of how how your shot feels with the church. Go ahead. Huh. Verse 30. For we are members of his body, mm-hmm. of his flesh, and of his bones. And of his bones. That's why we read that in Psalms 34 and 19, it says, None of his bones shall be broken. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but none of his bones shall be broken. Knowing that, talking about his legs weren't broken, but if we are the elect, you know, which the elect at the end of the day are going to be delivered at the end of the day, but none of his elect are going to be broken, actually. They're going to overcome. Yeah. And you know? Yeah. And that broken is going to, is, uh, this is like a representation of, the, like you said, uh, your spirit. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Not, not physically, but right. spiritual. That's right. You That's know? right. Go ahead. Your bone and your bone and your flesh and your flesh. That's you right. Go back into that lineage. We go back to that seed. That's right. The seed exactly. David, man. It go all the way back. Straight up. Right? Straight up. Back in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. For this call shall a man leave his father and mother. Remember that goes back to Genesis. Yep. Okay, go ahead. And shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. One flesh. Go ahead. And what start what starts that? What what happens when a man and a woman join together when she's a virgin? 
that's after the sex, that cutting. All right, that's that covenant between the two to make y'all one. Go ahead. God. Verse 32. This is a great mystery. He's saying this, all this is a mystery. This is Paul saying this. This is a great mystery. Go ahead. But I speak concerning Mashiach and the church. So that after the cutting of the flesh, all right, the blood, all of that, Yahweh Shai being pierced, all right, like you said, the upgrade of that covenant, you know, he likened all of this to a man and a woman in the action of actual sex. He's saying this is a mystery, but this is all really what I'm talking about is us being unified with Yahweh Shai, the marriage, the elect coming together, the covenant, all right? That was the last verse on that one, right? Uh, no, uh, verse 33. Okay, come, come. Verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's like we're supposed to revere Yahweh. Right. That's right. Okay? We're supposed to fear Yahweh. Yep. Okay? Because and we're. Too. That God? Yes, yeah, right now. The, the, that next verse in the first chapter, the next. The first verse of the next chapter, read it real quick. Huh. And he's still talking about the church. This cuts those guys about to watch this. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what it does. Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the right. Lord, right, right. for this is right. Because you guys. Look, it shows was talking about your teachers. Talking about the church? Yeah. The church. Yep. Mighty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Uh, verse 2. That's it. You don't know. Oh, oh, that's it's it. a few years ago. I remember that. Now. Unless you got something. Well, verse 2 is called. <laughs> verse 2. Honor thy father and mother, no. which is the first commandment with promise. Mm. This, uh, so, so how much more on the spiritual side? Yeah, right. Straight up. Come. Basically, he took worldly relationships and likened them to the church. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. And Paul, Paul, Yahusha did it too. Yahusha was the main one to do it. But a lot of Paul's teachings, that's how Paul taught. That's why you read it in uh, the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter chapter 3. You know, he clearly goes into how I can only expound unto you carnal things because y'all are carnal. I can't explain to you spiritual yeah. things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I got to use the example of carnal things for you to understand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, that's why I'm like, you know, brothers are bringing out on the highways and byways. That's why brothers make references to uh, current events, you know, whether it be music, whether it be the N uh, NBA Finals or, or the Super Bowl, you because you can relate. Like, John John Revelator did that yeah. using a white stone. Mm -hmm. That was something that yep. was popular at yeah. that time. That's yeah. right. That's right. Talking about boxing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's right. This is First Corinthians chapter two. I'm gonna read verse sixteen. It says, "For who hath known the mind of Yahweh that he may instruct him." But well, we have the mind of Hamashiach, and then chapter 3, verse 1, and I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes and Hamashiach. You know, so he would use those carnal examples to tell a bigger picture. And that's what he did when we had read that there in um, Ephesians, the fifth chapter. He used the example of marriage from a husband to a wife as an example of the covenant Yahweh made through his piercing and his blood covering us. All right. Now I got just this last precept. We can end it off on this one here. I was making a quick point. John, it made me think about because uh, it talks about the marriage supper of the land. You know, and uh, with that marriage, of course, through that bonding of marriage, the act of sex. You know, but as, uh, when we read like Proverbs nine chapter, it talks about how the wisdom had the uh, hewn out her seven pillars. She had she had fat her beast. She had prepared the table. You know what I'm saying? And that goes into cutting of the beast. You know, as if you're going to prepare a sacrifice. You know? So even now, with us, you know, getting to this knowledge, just wisdom and understanding, going to the highways and byways, receiving the mysteries that now our Shemar Shah is given to us, you know, that's putting your body up as a living sacrifice, too. Mm -hmm. You know, which all goes back to this binding contract spiritually being upgraded now with us being under the order of the there and operating in a, in a priesthood or in the office of a priest spiritually now. Gotcha. You know, not necessarily carnally, you know, doing the physical sacrifices, but getting into this word, pretty much making a conscious decision of discerning, okay, you know, versus am I gonna read, am I gonna get into this word, am I gonna, you know, indulge in this or am I gonna mm -hmm. do this? What sacrifice are you gonna make that's gonna be pleasing to me? Right. That's right, that's right. Kind of.
We're going to end this off here in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. It says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Can you start at verse 5? Come on, I'll start at verse 5. Revelation 19 and 5. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and that ye fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord, yeah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. Marriage of the Lamb is come. And there was a hyphen after when it says, Let us be glad and rejoice, give honor to him. There's a hyphen. Meaning everything that's written afterward is the why we should give honor and everything like that. You know? Mm -hmm. So it says, For the marriage of the Lamb is come, that unification. You know, we're betrothed to Yahweh Shai. That shedding of that blood, you know, constitutes that marriage. But what did he say? I go to prepare a place for thee. You know, when you go into the act of a wife being betrothed in the ancient Israelite culture, you know, when you're promised together, it could be up to a year that you're literally separated from your significant other. It could be all the way up to a year. And what's the husband doing? He's getting himself ready on how to, you know, how to uh, control the family. How he's getting things prepared for his family for that for that year, however long he's gone. And the wife is actually getting herself ready to be able to serve him. How to serve. She's trained up in everything. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Exactly. Yahweh I said, I go to prepare a place for him. Because every man who took a wife at a young age, because the Lord said, wife. And the, what's that precept? Wife of youth. The wife of uh, youth. You talking about some uh, Proverbs? Uh, Ezekiel. Uh, you talking about, uh, yeah, the kind of Lord wants a young woman. Uh, yeah, it's in Ezekiel. Okay. Now, yeah. we talked about how, you know, men took young women, but every time they took that, sometimes they had them, it was like, you go set her to the right. side and let her get herself. That's right. They didn't always. That's why Paul said you don't sin if you marry mm -hmm. your virgin. But most men who took those young women, sometimes they were just like, we go let her groom her, you know, let her come. be raised up in particular come. ways that I like. Yeah. You know, and then you'll, you know, come back and get to me. Come. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. But she's still a promise to you. Mm -hmm. But you right now, you're not going to lay with her. That's why Paul in that chapter was like, Basically, if you marry a virgin, you send not that right. you burn, mm -hmm. but she would draw to you, so you can, you know, marry labor that you burn. But some men wanted to wait for her to come to her own level on something. Patience, yeah. patience is always rewarded, and, and you know, this whole idea and talk reminds me of the mindset of being circumcised in heart. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and the whole idea of betrothal and being married and cutting mm -hmm. and establishing that covenant, covenant because we have we're being circumcised in heart. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and that goes into that, that, that cutting. Right. And the purposefulness of us being virgins. Mm -hmm. When you read Revelation 14 chapter, it talks about how we wasn't defiled with women. Right. We wasn't defiled, you know, and because we haven't been defiled by the world mm -hmm. and philosophy, we kept it single mm -hmm. upon you. I was shy in this walk, in this ministry, you know? And uh, that basically justifies that union. Come between us and the outshot upon his return. Comes being circumcised in heart, you know, which you know we talk about that cutting, you know, then a, a virgin, then the cutting of circumcision, and how spiritually it links. Mm -hmm. Right. So, straight up. Straight up. Come. I this is scripture for you. Oh, oh. I mean, you bring it up. Okay, I'll bring it up. Isaiah 54 and I'll read verse five. For thy maker is thine husband. And Yahweh of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the power of the whole earth shall be called. For Yahweh hath called thee as a woman forsaken, and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth. Of youth. <laughs> Lord wants a young woman. Come, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> straight up. And Ezekiel, I'm sorry. No, no, no. no I was going to say Ezekiel 16, when you read about that, it talks about how the Heavenly Father was like, man, look, I, I've done this, I've waited for your breast to be fashioned, and, you know, I can. Ornaments, you know what I'm saying? Now, now that you in the life that I want you, I'll make a covenant with you. Is he just 16? That whole chapter. Yeah. So you got in uh, Esther 2. Yeah. That's a good point. This is Revelation chapter, chapter 19, verse 8. 
And it says, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And Yahushua's blood to make covenant is what made his wife. Right. You know, like when a, a actual marriage happens, you know, she's 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 uh, in white and her face is covered, the veil is covered over, you know, precious. And when she goes to her husband, everything's shown. And then, you know, in the ancient culture, they they did what they did and had the token of the virginity. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just wanted to really go into that. You know, brothers brought out some very good points. I learned a whole lot just now on top of the stuff that I... I had written, so I'm excited to listen to it again and take notes on the different points that different brothers made as well. But um, to the to the audience, hey, Lord willing, this was edifying. Okay, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, 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 Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, Lord Akiyam, and the few sincere sisters that listen to this word. All right, that believe. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.